Jordan Neely was a 30-year-old man who some New Yorkers may remember. Here are some videos showing Neely as quite the Michael Jackson impersonator who performed around New York City subways, transit hubs, and streets. Neely was also homeless and struggled with mental illness, factors that many believe contributed to why Neely is no longer alive. On Monday, Neely was allegedly yelling and pacing back and forth on a subway train in Manhattan until a stranger, a former Marine, who has not yet been named, put Neely in a chokehold on the subway train floor. We're about to show the video and a warning, it is disturbing. The incident that you see here was shot by Juan Alberto Vasquez, who was on the subway train at the time. As you can see, Jordan is being held down by another rider, locked on the ground while two other passengers restrain him. Vasquez said the chokehold lasted for about 15 minutes. Neely was unconscious on the car floor when officers arrived and died at the scene. The cause of death has been deemed compression of the neck and ruled a homicide, according to the medical examiner. The man who put Neely in the chokehold was taken into, was taken into custody and later released. No charges have yet been filed against him, or anyone else in the car, for that matter. New York Mayor Eric Adams, a former police officer, responded to the incident as well as the backlash. I was a former transit police officer, and I responded to many jobs where you had a passenger assisted someone. And so we cannot just blankly say, blankly say what a passenger should or should not do in a situation like that. Assisting someone. Joining me now is Reverend Al Sharpton, host of Politics Nation and the president of the National Action Network, and Shams DeBaron, a homeless rights and housing activist. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Shams, I do want to start with you first. Welcome to the show. Tell me what you make of the way that this young Michael Jackson impersonator uh, was killed. Ooh. Well, and my brother Sharpton, that's my family right there. Um, we've we go way, way back, back. Um, and you all have to forgive me if I get too emotional. This brother was someone who was failed by the foster care system. It's failed by so many layers of government. This is a brother who... I know what it's like to be a foster child, to be in the streets, and to try and find a way to survive. This is a brother who was trying his best to survive and did it through entertainment, through performing. I knew him from that aspect. Didn't even know he was homeless. But I've seen so many people have to resort to becoming street performers, like brother Jordan was and when you're that young and you don't have help it causes so many yeah I hear you brother and I do I hear you and and you know Rev it's giving Bernie gets I have to be honest with you the, this whole incident the fact that this man was not arrested the, uh, the fact that we're not getting his name you know it's giving Eric Garner uh, it's giving a lot of things that we really should not have to remember I want to play for you two pieces of sound this is Governor Kathy Hochul's first reaction and then her updated reaction to this killing people who are in our you know, are homeless in our subways have many of them in the throes of mental health episodes and that's what i believe are some of the factors involved here and you now people there's consequences for behavior i'm really pleased that the district attorney is looking into this matter as i said there have to be consequences and so we'll see how this unfolds but uh his family deserves justice it became very clear that you know he was not going to cause harm to these other people and the the video of three individuals holding him down until the last breath was snuffed out of him, I would say was a very extreme response. Well, somebody must have told her her first reaction was inadequate. Reverend Sharpton, your reaction to all of this? Well, it clearly is something that is above being disturbed. This is, in my judgment, from the film, showing the lack of any kind of civility and a legal reaction. Whether this young man, Brother Jordan, was troubled or not, he should not be sentenced with death. You were talking about a life was taken, and it struck me, which is why I immediately put out a statement, 
he's on the subway impersonating Michael Jackson, who was close to me. As you know, Michael used to come up to the National Action Network. I preached Michael's funeral. And uh, and and you combine that with Eric Gardner, where we have a state law against ch- chokeholds. So what is bothering me is the press is looking into the Jordan family. What happened to Jordan? What happened to his family? What happened to the guy that would choke him for 15 minutes? We don't even know his name. What is the background of this guy that was clearly behind Jordan? He can't say self-defense. He was not at risk. So to let this go forward in any way is to sanction vigilantism in this city and therefore would have national ramifications. We cannot let this go. We will support whatever the homeless advocates are doing because this is really giving legitimacy to those that can say, I can get up on a subway if somebody's making noise and do what I want to do, including causing their death. This cannot happen. This cannot be allowed. And I've talked to the DA's office. They must investigate and prosecute to the full extent of the law, or we're back to Bernard Getz. And if you want to be more recent, to uh, to, uh, Eric Gardner, this is a fusion of both offenses. And I think and what, the Bernie uh, Getz case for the... our, our brother. Yeah, oh, no, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say that no, you know, Bernie the Bernard Getz, Getz was... case was 84. And, and that's supposedly, that's vigilantism. And as you said, in the case of Eric Garner, supposedly in 2022, the Supreme Court of New York upheld the fact that police can't do a chokehold. How does this guy get to get away with doing a chokehold that police can't even do? And what about all those other people standing there watching him die? How is that not a crime? They didn't help him. There was no one else well, on the train. Well, no one was at risk. Well, me, not only, well, not only didn't help him, you have three guys holding him down. What about the yeah. guys holding him down that aided and abetted a chokehold that resulted in a murder? Exactly, exactly. And, and let me say that. Let me say Please. this: there is something to be said about media who knows this individual's name and has yet to release it. There's something to be said about media who is depicting this person as an ex-marine, as if to say that he served the country. So it's all right. We're going to protect his identity because somehow he's a victim. When in reality, what he has done is illegal. So, and I also want to center this. Yeah, he's an ex-Marine, but he's an ex-Marine who is trained to kill. Does this This make it... Does it make it more dangerous, sir, for people who are homeless? You are an advocate for the homeless. This seems to me to be an open door because people get nervous on the subway. They see homeless people or they're panhandling. This seems to me like it's an open door to vigilantism against people who are already vulnerable. We've, we've seen already people who have been killed while homeless, killed, murdered. We just dealt with that last year in several states. So... Yes, of course, this sends a message. It could send a message that it's okay. And that's why we have to, as the reference say, we have to hold this individual accountable because with the medical examiner declaring this as a homicide, a homicide is a crime. So we can't let him not go through due process and be held accountable for what he has done to this individual who posed no imminent danger to anyone, to those people there. To anyone, to anyone anyone on that train. People were standing there quite casually. He was definitely clearly not a threat. Reverend Al Sharpton, Shams DeBaron, thank you both very much. We will keep an eye on this case. 